Hi everyone, my name is Anaga and I'm part of the data science discovery team and in this video today we're going to be doing a question on uh, conditional probability. So let's go ahead and get started. So here it says suppose jurors make the uh, right decisions about guilt and innocence 60% of the time, right, and that 70% of all defendants are truly guilty. What is the probability of an innocent defendant being convicted? So if you don't know um, kind of the terms here, convicted basically means um, that you are, you know, judged to be guilty, even if you're actually not, that's like the decision that's made, and acquitted means like being set free. So here it says that what is the probability of an innocent defendant being convicted? So we want to find that given a um, an individual given that they were innocent, right? So what is the probability of an innocent defendant? So given, um, if this is our probability statement, given that they were innocent, right? What is the probability that of an innocent de defendant being convicted? So given they were uh, innocent, what is the probability that that individual was convicted, right? So this is kind of the probability that we need to find. And the best, I think the best way to go about these probability questions, these conditional probability questions especially, is to make a table, right? And of course you can use um, any any sort of formula you want, uh, you can use a base theorem, that's totally up to you. But I think the table really helps you visualize right, what the probabilities are. So here I'm going to go ahead and create a table where I have uh, guilty and we have innocent, right? And then we have uh, acquitted. and convicted. Okay, so here it says, uh, suppose jurors make the right decisions about guilt and innocent 60% of the time, and that 70% of all defendants are truly guilty. So first what I wanna do is I want to go ahead and choose some total number of people that I'm going to be dealing with, right? And here, these are my marginal probabilities. So I have my total columns right here. Yeah. And so first I want to do is I want to choose like the total number of people that I'm dealing with. Uh, let's say that I want to choose uh, 100 as my total, right? You can choose 1,000. I wouldn't choose less than 100 because um, then it's it's going to be hard dealing with you know, your basically your total will be too small um, and you're going to be dealing with really small decimals. So here it says that 70% 70 per, 70 of all defendants are truly guilty, right? So if I have 100 total, I'm going to call this my total defendants, right? If I have 100 total defendants, this means 70% of them are truly guilty, right? So if I have 100 total defendants, 70 of them are truly guilty, 70%, 70 of them, right? So this means that 30 are innocent, right? And so here it says that suppose jurors make the right decisions about guilt and innocence 60% of the time, right? So let's identify what the correct decisions actually are. Well, if you're guilty, you should be convicted, right? So if you're guilty, you should be, um, you should ideally be charged with something, right? So that's the right decision. And if you're innocent, you should be acquitted, right? You should be set free if you're innocent. That That is the correct decision, the right decision to make, right? So here, suppose jurors make the right decisions about guilt and innocence 60% of the time. So out of these people who are guilty, right, out of these 70 total people who are guilty, 60% of them will be correctly convicted, right? Because the jurors will make that right decision. So out of these 70 people, 60% uh, 60 of them will correctly be guilty, will, will correctly be convicted. So that's going to be 42 because that's 60% of 70 is 42. So out of the 70 people who are guilty, right, 42 will correctly be convicted. And then here, out of the 30 people who are, who are innocent, right, so out of the 30 people who are innocent, 60% will correctly be acquitted, right? That means 60% will correctly be set free. And that's just going to be 18. So 18 out of the 30 people will experience like a correct decision, right? So these two columns basically represent the correct decisions, uh, which is like 60, which happens 60% of the time. And now it's just, you know, filling the rest of the table, basically. 
like out of 18, this is just going to be 12 here, right? And then this will be 54. Um, this over here, 70 minus 42 will be 28. And then finally, this should just be 46. And, and then you just want to make sure all these values align, and that should be good. So now you're finding the probability of convicted given innocent. So now finding the actual probability is pretty easy with the table, right? So how many people, first we want to see how many people were innocent. Well, out of all these total people, 30 of these people were innocent, right? So we're actually dealing with, um, with this middle row right here because we're only looking at the innocent people so out of the total people so what is the probability that a person was convicted given they were innocent well how many people were actually innocent that's 30 and out of those innocent people how many were convicted well that's just 12 right so our total probability is just going to be 12 out of 30 because out of those 30 innocent people 12 were actually convicted so our final answer is just 12 out of 30 which is correct so Hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll see you next time. Bye.